Hey there, YouTube. It's Rob here, heading back to the shadows and the streets once more with part three of Let's Play Shadowrun Returns. Well, actually, I'm heading into a bar right now, but that's you know, another story. <coughs> I also say, just a warning in advance, this is going to be a long series. The game is about, as I may have mentioned, the game is between 10 to 12 hours long, so yeah. I'll, I'll be at this for a while. So I thought I had nine karma to level up with. Now what I really want to focus on, I can get my body up, because that's my hit points. I want to focus on quickness for ranged combat, as well as intelligence and decking. So let's see here. What's the SP control do anyway? Let me check that out. Uh, increases the power of my expert systems. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, that'll spend all nine of my points. I'll increase my intelligence to four. That uh, way, there I can hit better when I'm in the matrix. And uh, also, it also get, will enhance my my ability to deck in certain scenarios. Increase my actual decking up by one, so I can equip the Renraku Craftwork one. So as you level it up to, uh, as you level your skill up, yeah, you get you can learn different abilities and equip better. Decks. And if the SP increase the power of my Decker's expert systems, which are you, basically what those are is they're things you can summon when you're in the Matrix. So yeah, I want to get that up too. Next time I'll focus more on quickness range combat, and I'm eventually going to get my submachine gun and my dodge up. My uh, body will judge hit points. Basically, I'll give a very quick overview of what each thing does. Strength is your ability to hit in, me to hit in melee. Actually, I'm better off doing it in here. So body is your hit points. Uh, every, every point of body is 10 hit points. Quickness is your ability to hit in ranged combat and your ability to, be redu er, ability to dodge physical attacks. Range combat is self-explanatory. Plus, you get special abilities as you unlock uh, as you un unlock points. Then you got your weapons, which increases or increase the chance for greater than normal damage, like critical hits. Plus, you get special abilities with the weapon. Dodge is self-explanatory. Strength calculates your chance to hit with melee and throwing weapons, and how far a grenade can be thrown. Close combat is your chance to hit with melee weapons, and then you got your melee and unarm for damage, and throwing weapons as well for uh, your chance to hit a target, I guess, with grenades. Intelligence we've already covered. Biotech is interesting, it's one that everyone should, that everyone should level up a little bit, I think. You get a hit bonus of hit points recovered when using a medikit. We've covered those. Drone controls for riggers, specifically, and as well as drone combat. Will powers your chance to hit ma with magical attacks, as well as to dodge magic attacks. Spell casting is mostly for magic, cheat casting is for physical adepts. Charisma is interesting too. Charisma is mostly used for uh, mostly used for con uh, what I call it again, shamans that are conjuring, but it also you also unlock etiquette as you level them up too, which you can use for conversations as you've seen. So yeah, those are the, the stats you can level. Now let's go talk to some bar scum. We're gonna be come actually really good friends with me by the time I'm done this game. Leave this piece of hot. The bartender is a striking elf, sporting a perfectly toned body, perfectly pouty lips, and perfectly tapered ears. Her eyes harmonize, save me, and take me in equal measure, hinting just the right notes for the maximum amount of attraction tips. She looks at you, sees another elf, and smiles big. Hey there, I haven't seen you here before. What can I get you? That does dialogue does change. I'm going to increase the volume a little bit, too. This game's not as loud as Metal Slug was. Maybe I can put the maximum. Yeah, we'll try that. What am I looking for? I have a date. I've got a bar tab of Coyote's name on it. Is she here? She looks worried. No, I think she's away on business. Business, huh? Is this your shaman with a name like Coyote? She laughs. No. She shot a coyote once, thinking it was a shaman who double-crossed her. We've been calling her Coyote ever since. She's been missing since yesterday. Some people think the Ripper got her, but I know her. Coyote can take care of herself. Not at all the target of my next mission. 
She starts to turn away when a man with the face of a survivor and the zeal of a convert tugs at her arm. Hard. It's clear they do have history. They try to keep their voices low, but the intensity of their conversation makes them easy to overhear. By the way, I'm probably not going to do voices just for, for a while, unless I find one that I'm you know, compelled to do a voice for. Sherry, you have to listen to me. If you stick around here, you could end up dead, or worse. The Ripper is out there, and he's real. The last killing happened down just down the block, and now Coyote's missing. They'll probably find her tomorrow in a dumpster without her head. Come on, Sherry Bomb, think! I don't know why he sounds black. He's just sound more like a British yuppie. I think plenty, Shane. I'm getting a PH freaking D from UW in neuroprosthetics, studying under the Ojimans. And how am I paying for it? Bartending. Tips. They're a faster way for Baron's girl to earn that kind of scratch, but I'm not taking them. So what do you want from me? I want what you want. A better life. A better world for everyone. Universal Brotherhood can give you that. Oh, I'm not even going to tell you why they're creepy fucks. You'll see eventually. I've heard this all before. This isn't some kind of trick to get us back together. Things are different now. I'm different now. The Brotherhood. Cherry Bomb's face is pretty hard. Armored in a lipstick and low expectations. The Universal Brotherhood is for other people, Shane. Rich Bellevue types who can afford their membership fees and voluntary donations. At least they make it out fairly early that it's like cult-like. This isn't about money. It's about binding the world together in Brotherhood. Come with me. Attend the Discovery Meeting. Get to the core of who you are. I heard Lynn Telestrian give a talk last night called The New Family of the Sixth World. Oh, Lynn has mentioned earlier, I didn't know. I've got a family right here, Shane. They're drunks and lowlifes and whores and I'd choose them over any of your Brotherhood members. Now buzz, I need to get back to work. With body language that leaves no question that the conversation is over, Cherry Bomb turns her back on him. Sorry, I got interrupted. I heard he's got the strength of the righteous, doesn't he? Her eyes, her pretty eyes, narrow. Be careful about whose conversations you listen on and in on here. Some folks aren't as friendly as I am. You get the look about you says you're not just here for the entertainment. Are you badge? I think you know the answer to that. She regards you with a smirk. Mm-hmm. I do. You're independent. We're trying to spot a bronze the minute they walk in here. Something I can help you with? I need. A, I have a few questions. Ask away. Tell me about this place. Some come here for the booze, some come for the companionship. Others are looking for something they can't get anywhere else. If it's illegal or immoral and it can be bought, sold, rented, or consumed, you can probably find it here. You need seems to attract people like you. Who is that you're talking to? Shane, old boyfriend. He used to work here. Then one day he saw a billboard for the Universal Brotherhood, and that was that. Went to a meeting, made new friends, moved in with them. I was happy for him until he started coming around trying to recruit me. I don't need that dreck. Ever hear the name Sam Watts? She nods. Sam was a regular customer and a regular pain in the ass for as long as I've been here. Talked a big game, but he was always broke. As soon as he got any money in his pocket, he went straight to his head. Chips, drugs, or booze. Coyote, has, Coyote had a soft spot for him, though. Did you see Sam the night he died? No, that was Coyote's shift. Who runs this place? I want to talk to them. That'd be Mrs. Kubota. She's in the back room. You can't miss her. Thanks for the intel, I forgot. Let's go whiz. He's an asshole. No sweat. Talk to you later. By the way, if, if you like the music in this game, I should mention that, uh, another, yet another link to the past. Non Zelda related, of course. Haha. <laughs> that was bad. Anyhow, the music was actually done by the same, same guy that did the music for the SNES and Genesis Shadowruns games, which is awesome. The guy looks kind of human for Ark. I like that. Hey, guy, got some extra outfits I'm trying to unload. You want first dibs? I'll take a look. Right now, I've only got something that gives me uh, armor one. Well, I think it. Ooh, the tourist look. Grants intelligence plus one. If I can find something that grants quickness, I'll take that. But. Right now, I think I'm going to be out of secure Decker clothing. Armor one. Hmm. Actually, I'll take the secure ninja clothing, grant me armor pl or dodge plus one. And it does actually change my look, too. That's one thing I like about this game. There we go. See, now I'm dressed like a freaking ninja. I also realized, too, I was mentioned breaking, you know, two unwritten rules with this game. 
I actually kind of broke a third unwritten rule that I normally only play classic games, which, A, I mean, for one, I like I mostly like playing the games I grew up with, and B, they, they run a lot better with Camtasia open. But, you know, this game is so good, I thought I'd take and make an exception. The Asian woman's experience reads open for business, but her demeanor reads dealer rather than companion. She has a jack on her neck, a gun on her hip, and a chip on her shoulder. She eyes you with a sneer. You look like you could use some firepower. Something simple. I got guns so smart they practically fire themselves. You looking for tech? Got some of that too, if that's the way you roll. Let's we'll see what she's got. She's got a better submachine gun, then I'll take it. What I have right now is damage 6, bullet capacity 24. Damage 10, capacity 24, I'll take it. I'll also take a machete as well. So there I have a melee weapon. Ooh, but I shouldn't actually take the... Yeah. I forgot I need to increase my... I need to increase my weapon stash here. I can't remember what skills increase your weapon slots. Because I want... I definitely need that deck. I should have also saved money and got myself a run run Rocky deck, but maybe I can get money by then. Let's talk to Mr. Cluey. He's actually a pretty cool guy. I love the way that the trolls have horns sometimes. Posted at the doorway to the VIP section is a tower of troll muscle wrapped in an impossibly tailored suit. Whether the product of good genes or expensive aftermarket cosmetic work, the troll's gleaming horns perfectly frame his face, and his polished tusks and goatee accentuate the set of a ja uh, lantern jaw. Boko, please behave yourself. Will do. You get trouble in here often? Yeah, I'll go with that. Nothing but a stern nothing a stern look usually can't solve. You have business here? Was a friend of Sam yeah, was a friend of Sam Watts. Know him? Sure everyone here knew Sam. Shame to lose part of the family. See, he's a good guy. There's a sharpness in Cluey's eyes, a look of a man who has seen much and earned wisdom at a young age. In your role here, I su I suppose you've often escorted Sam to the door. Yes, albeit gently. Sam was a drunk, but he usually wasn't the violent one. Usually, what about the night he died? He was a bit agitated. Didn't catch the specifics. Might have been over a woman. Thought I was going to have to show him out. But I had to deal with a couple of rival go-gangers posturing for one of the working girls upstairs. Jake helped Sam out instead. Keep those eyes and ears open. Always do. So he's a really good guy. I like that character a lot. This is Janet or looking motherfucker. Oh yeah, Johnny Clean. He help he's helpful actually. The man is dressed like a janitor, but is wearing unusually clean overalls. He's tall, rail thin, and has a cunning look in his eyes and says he's more than just a maintenance man. Howdy, name's Johnny Clean. You knew? I am. I imagine you've seen all sorts of things in a place like this, eh? True, quite true. And I keep my mouth shut about it too. That's the secret to keeping a job here, and staying alive in general. Gotta work. See you around. There's more to him than that. You'll see later. Let's talk to Noog. Noog, cover... Er, there's Noog, wow. Covered in glowing magical talismans and fetishes, the troll does not seem fully of this world. He mumbles to himself constantly, apparently participating in several conversations at once, but with entities you can neither see nor hear. Mutter, told you so. It's not like that at all. <laughs> Bring me proof that you shall, and you shall have it all. <laughs> I'm honored, your majesty. Nutcase. Mutter, mutter. That was why I said to use mustard instead of ketchup. <laughs> Forgive me, Gene. I was a fool. <laughs> he looks at you in the eye as other conversations on hold. You may peruse my magical wares and see their glory. I would like to view your wares, because you have spells that I cannot take. Yeah, that's what I thought. Just all magic spells. It's kind of cool. I don't mind buying spells from the dude, even though I, you know, can't use any of them right now. So I thought, oh, okay, so let's talk to Mrs. Kubota. Kubota. Mrs. Kubota watches you cross the room, sizing you up in his, as you approach. As you get closer, you can see that she's a mixed race, African and Japanese. Her demeanor says that this is my house, messes with me at your peril, but her eyes twinkle with a playful light when she speaks. Kanbanwa, good evening. <laughs> My, but aren't you the pretty elf? Are you enjoying the seamstress union? There should be plenty for a man like you to enjoy. 
shines you closely, or is this business? Business? <laughs> I suspected as much when you walked in. Oh my! What business do you have here with me? I'm looking for information. She eyes you suspiciously. Of course you are. Knowledge is power, ne? So I've been told. Soka, and why should I help you? Jake sent me. I'm glad to hear that Jake Armitage is alive. Again. He was an interesting life. Very well, if Jake sent you to me, I will help you. Wow, that was, I was just guessing that would work well. What do you want to know? How well do you know Sam? Did you know Sam? I knew him. We all did. Sam was a regular here. Whenever he could beg or borrow enough Nuyen to become altered in some way, drugs, chips, alcohol, it didn't matter to Sam. As long as he was bent, he was always looking for his next fix. He clung to his place like it was his lifeline, and we treated him as part of the family. Even if none of us truly liked him, except Coyote, did you see Sam on the night of his death? He was here, quite inebriated, as he often was. Coyote was working the bar that night, and she informed me that Sam was getting rowdy and belligerent with other customers. When I requested he leave, he refused. My bouncer, Mr. Cluey, was off dealing with another issue, so I requested that Jake escort Sam up ba the back door to the alley. That was the last I saw either of either of them. Why is this place called the Seamstress Union? This is interesting. During the gold rush years, there was a census, and the politicians wanted as high a number as possible to gain power and revenue. The bulls of their numbers, they decided to include all the working girls, quote-unquote, of which there were many, to the rolls. However, given the times, they could not list the girls' true occupations, so they entered them all as seamstresses. When a girl accumulated enough money to open her own place of business, she named it the Seamstresses Guild, so p uh, potential workers would know that they would be treated fairly there. And thus, a rich tradition was born. That's awesome. So you're a former... seamstress? No. Perhaps when we know each other more, I will reveal more about myself. For now, enjoy the union. One more question. Can you tell me where to find Coyote? Her face darkens. Would that I could. I've not seen her in two days. She's a smart woman and quite dangerous, but I fear for her. She's smart, why well, fear for her? Because she's in a dangerous line of work, and there's always someone smarter, more prepared. Her room is upstairs. If you're looking for her, I invite you to examine it. You may be able to uncover her whereabouts. I would not normally betray her privacy in this way, but she's missed two shifts now, and cannot be reached on her calm. It's unlike her. If, if something has happened, I'll not have an action on my conscience. Here's the key. See, she's aw Miss Kabata's awesome. Never have learned about, uh, her, about what she was before this seamstress union, but... I wonder if I can hack this. Great security passwords that require a password. Let's hack the panel. Ah, darn. I was kind of hoping to go into a decking sequence, but... I don't know if I got in this area before, actually. I get the feeling it's needed. <coughs> Stuff bear seems to be hiding something. Well then, oh nitro. Oh, okay. Nothing big here. Just some drugs. Okay. So when you're actually trying to get into Coyote's room, or some information you're getting in Coyote's room, that you actually, I think you can deck to get it. But the, normally you need to, you need to figure shit out based on the contents of a room. And I figured out two or three of the hits to resetting your password. But but, ah, uh, there's one of them that I, I only got by guesswork. I'll show you the, the hints I figured out. Okay, we keep our clothes in a box and a box on the floor. And that's nothing. So there's a little bit of action movies and cigarette butts. Frame painting the Chicago side, skyline. See, one of the questions is to reset her password. You're resetting her password to get information, by the way. One of the questions is what city is she from? That Chicago post is a clue. Then you go in here. Coyote's bed is a diary with several pages sticking out of it. Open the first paper. There's a receipt stuck between the pages and a diary entry. Diary entry. I came back from my shift to find four of Paco's goons stepping on our apartment floor. It's getting fragging ridiculous. I want to be with him, with the real Paco, but this cutter dreck keeps messing everything up. I love him, but he's totally different with the gang. I, it's how I make cash, baby, he always says. I try to tell him he doesn't need the cash. I can support us both with what I make at the Seamstresses Union, but he still goes on these runs. 
with these bozos all over my floor, I feel like it's just seeing how far he can push me before I kick him out. I try to be patient, but why does it have to be all or all one way? And the receipt is for Browning Max Power Pistol from Jim Park downstairs. The note saying how big guns on a hot woman turn her on. Yeah, good, thanks, thanks guys. Les lesbians in a, in a game like this, what a shock. This paper has a handwritten poem on it and a diary entry. Diary entry. Sometimes it seems like Paco reads my mind. Or my diary. Maybe he does the latter. I wouldn't be surprised. Hi, Paco! Ever since last week, he hasn't mentioned the cutters once. He leaves the apartment with a see you in a few hours, babe, and returns later without comment. I don't know what's, if it's really going to help us or, or force him to avoid the subject in conversation completely, but I have felt better without our constant arguing about it. And the poem. Let's just say that Paco should stick the guns on motorcycles and leave the poetry to others. <laughs> And let's go to the fourth page. A receipt for a wall safe installed near the bathroom door. Set no combination. I don't have to memorize that because that that combination uh, memor basically uh, works itself out. There you go. <coughs> I'll send that frag grenade to my stash. I don't even know where I got the idea that, Mur that Maria Mercurial was uh, her favorite musician. Oh, what? There, there seems to be more, too, actually. I'm missing something here. From her diary. Yeah, there we go. Look at the picture. The picture shows a young girl with caramel skin and dark brown hair. She has a snake wrapped around her arm, yet she is smiling. The back of the photograph has shadow scrawled on it. Yeah, shadows a hint about one of the other ones. A COD receipt for a special order. Five pounds of zebra meat from Mari's Meat Emporium, located near Pike Place Market. That'll come that plays into a little bit later. So normally I come in here, you go password recovery. So the name of her first childhood pet is Shadow. Favorite musical act, I, th uh, I think was I can't remember which it was. I'm just gonna pick something that was wrong. And then Chicago's her hometown. So I, I had to like go through all of the answers for the music question. Because I figured the other two out. Crack easily unha unhash the password. Trust no one. And you're transferred to the desktop. Here's a list of basic applications. So the calendar. Three days ago. Meet with Delia about gig. Today. Meet Paco for date at Pike Place Market. Due in 30 minutes. Contacts. Can I use contact list as exactly one entry? Someone named Paco. There's no comlink number or other contact information form available. This does not seem like a very useful list of contacts. Access history. A quick scan of her recent search to show that Coyote has been reading a great deal about Hellhounds. It also suggests more than a casual interest in vintage action figures. We'll leave the Okay, so we know that she's that she was supposed to or that she was supposed to speak with that Delia guy. Who I do not meet later on in any way whatsoever. whatsoever. To talk to her. How can I help you? Do you know Paco? He's a ganger, member of the Cutters. He's a good kid in a nasty line of work. I warned Coyote about getting too attached to that type. They don't live long. You're at Maury's Meat Emporium. Her face twitches in disgust. No, I'm a vegetarian. You know Jin Park sold Coyote a gun recently? I'd be more surprised if she hadn't. Badges can deal with, the mo with most of the troublemakers, but around here you need a gun just to take trash out to the dumpster. Coyote has a date with Paco at Pike Place Market in the next half hour. If you could go down there, it might bring me peace of mind. I'll call a cab for you. It should be able to get you in there in time. Gambade kudasai. kudasai. Good luck. Okay, so I'm loaded up with my new weaponry, I've leveled up. I don't know if I have enough karma to level up before going, I didn't get before going there. Uh, yeah, actually, I can level up my ranged combat, make it equal to my quickness. Ooh, that gives me an additional weapon slot. Sweet. I wish I would have realized that before buying the fucking machete, but I'll have that for my next mission. So you can go here. The game is the game is it's fairly linear. At uh, you, 
you, you can only travel to certain locations that you're basically your next location, but yeah, it's still fun as fuck. Okay, I think this will be, once I read the noir text here, I think this will be a good place to call it. Okay, well, first of all, I'll confirm the autosave, rather. Pike Place Market. You catch a cab from Turretsville, Turretsville to Pike Place Market, and the mercifully quiet ride it takes you from probably going to be mugged to probably going to pay too much money for your drinks. Compared to the urban wasteland of the Barrens, the downtown area is filled with modern buildings, lighted streets, and unbarred shops, all living beneath the shadows of massive corporate arcologies. For many, these arcologies are home. For others, are hulking monuments to where the world went wrong. Famous for its fishmongers, Pike Place Market has been around since the early 1900s, overlooking the bay. Now it's a market for all things, legal and illegal. A melting pot for the ha for the haves and the have-nots. Even though most of the shops are closed, the sights, sounds, and smells of the market hit you from the moment you step out of the cab. There we go. The game is auto-saved. So next time, we find Coyote's boyfriend, Paco. We find what the hell happened to Coyote, and we'll see if she makes it out alive. Uh, the music of choice this time, by the way, is um, more industrial black metal. It's the song New World Order by The Covenant. That's Covenant with a K. They used to spell it with a C, but there was already an, uh, an industrial, ba or dance ba industrial dance band called The Covenant with a C, and they basically said, Hey, Norwegian fuckheads, change your fucking names! I think that was how the conversation went exactly word for word. Don't quote me on that, but if no one quotes you, you haven't said a thing worth saying. Remember that. Alright, uh, now, now that I leave on an obscure musical no lyric note, I wish you all adieu. Have a good one.